I got a request in the comments in the last video to show some of the siding going on. There's not a whole lot to siding. Uh, there's a couple of rules that you want to follow, but basically it's fairly straightforward work. Here I've got a piece that I've already cut the length to fit between the corner and the corner board. I'm going to hold it up to the bottom of the window here. Mark it where it needs to be cut. Now the next thing I need to do is measure how much space I've got between the top of this clap and the bottom of the window trim. And here I can see it's one and a quarter. I'm going to reduce that by an eighth of an inch. If anything, you want to have a little bit of a gap here so that the caulking will fit in there. Caulking will hold better if it can actually squeeze into a crack rather than just sit on the surface. Where this siding is rabbited on the back, it fits down over the previous course. I've got to measure up from the bottom of the rabbit. So I'll come up one and an eighth here. Okay, I've moved it out to the back here where I'm doing the cutting. I've transferred my marks that I made holding it up to the back of the piece and I'll just square down from them with my rafter square here and then I've got my mark here and I'll draw a straight line across just using the tape like this and the pencil like this a lot of guys used to like to use a straight edge or another way is a string line like a chalk line uh, problem with that is if the board curves what you're going to wind up with is a straight cut on a curved board and it'll be thicker or thinner in the middle so this is usually the better and faster way to mark it. Draw it across like this and then to do the cutting I'm going to use my jigsaw now for the straight cut, if your jigsaw can oscillate, and put that on there because the cutting will go a lot faster along the grain when you switch to that. Another way to make the straight cut is to use a circular saw and then finish it with the jigsaw. On all the lower courses, I fully primed all the pieces up to about four courses high. The thing is, that's the area that will get the most water exposure. I've got wide overhangs on this roof. I really don't need to worry about, well, not too much anyway, water hitting the walls higher than that. So above that, I'm only priming the ends of the each clap and around the windows. So while I'm waiting for the primer to dry on the other one, I've got a piece ready to go up here. First thing to do is to get some caulking in the corners. I'm using a really good quality caulking here too. You don't want to cheap out on this. Let's put a good bead in the corners. And I'll take my piece that I primed on the butt ends and pop it in. You want these to be a snug fit, but you don't want them, you know, if you're putting on crown molding or trim, you'll do a spring fit where it's, you know, a little bit longer than the opening, so that it goes in really tight. You don't want that here. You want it to just fit with that pushing on the parts that it goes up against. Now, I've got a stick here that I've cut to the right exposure. So I can quickly check to make sure that it's down properly where it needs to be. I can see that this end has to come down. That's good. I'm going to check it here. I'm going to check it over here. Now before I even got started over here, I made lines showing where the studs are inside the wall. I want to drive my nails right into the studs, not just into the sheathing. And when I'm driving in the nails, I want to make sure that they're just flush with the surface without pounding them below the surface. The nails I'm using are two and a half inch hot dip galvanized spiral nails, and they really hold well. The primer's dry on this piece. Now I can go ahead and put it in once again, caulking in the corners. This time, though, caulking beside the window as well. 
I'm not going to put any underneath. Talking on this side and in the other corner. Now that they're up, I can take the Schlac base primer and just hit the knots. And that's it. A single coat on each knot will do. You don't want to prime the whole board with this. The, the uh, coating is too brittle. It will crack over time. I get any places where there's a knot or a sap pocket like up there. Before I go any further, I'm going to get this joint beneath the window cocked. I'm using the same high quality cocking as I used in the corners. Now I just take my finger and smooth it off. Over here where it meets the corner, I've also cocked it. I haven't done these. I've primed these this morning, so they're ready now. The primer is dry. I get this on as quickly as possible because it does take a while to dry before I can get the final coat. I'm just doing the face. I'm not doing underneath. Again, use my finger to tool it. And then when the shellac primer dries, I can get a coat of primer on it. Like I said, there's not a whole lot to it. Uh, just a couple of simple rules to follow and you won't go wrong. These particular ones are pine and that's the reason why I have to prime the knots beforehand. If it's a spruce, spruce generally doesn't bleed through so you wouldn't have to prime the knots. That's the only difference. Uh, the other thing about this, this is lapped over. It's got a rabbit on the bottom. Normally what they recommend is to leave a one eighth of an inch gap. In my case what I'm doing is I'm coming right down tight on top of it because I know the moisture content of this siding is a little on the high side. It will shrink over the course of the summer and that's where it will probably stay for the life of the siding. So if anything I'm going to be opening a gap inside rather than compressing it. So not a concern. Now here at the back I've got this deck going in so I had to get the bottom courses done anyway. I won't have access to it after the deck is finished. There's no way you can get in there afterwards and stick the pieces in. So I did up so high out here. Now all of these have been primed. The first step in priming is to hit the knots with something that will stop them from bleeding through the paint or telegraphing through the paint. And it used to be once upon a time you could go to any paint store and buy uh, a bottle of white shellac and it was like three bucks or something. And you would paint the knots with that. These days you have to buy a shellac based primer and I think I paid $23 for a liter can so you know, times have changed. Anyway you hit the knots with that first then you let that dry. It doesn't take long. Uh, prime it with exterior gray primer and then the paint. I want to get one coat of paint on as soon as I possibly can. So as soon as that primer dries I'm putting the paint on to protect the wood. You really want to get that on as quickly as possible. Before I put on the first coat of paint I'm going to take some sandpaper and knock off any dirt that's in the primer. I'm not particularly careful about the primer. I want to get it on. I don't you know if a little bit of sawdust is in there, I don't worry about it because I'm going to take my sandpaper and knock any of that stuff off. Now I'm generally only going to do this down around eye level and below. I'm not going to bother to do this higher on the wall because no one will ever see it. Faster and more efficient way is to use a pole sander if you have one. And to do the painting, I'm using the best quality I can afford. You really want to use good paint whenever possible unless you like painting and want to paint it again in a year or so. I'm using a three inch brush. You can use a roller but I don't like the texture on roller leaves and I don't think it really does it a lot faster because you still have to cut in. 
I'm painting one clap at a time right across, two maximum. You want to maintain a wet edge as much as possible.